So now that we've gone through the prerequisites for the Cisco Secure Device Manager, let's get our hands dirty inside this wonderful little user interface. Now as I've mentioned, we have installed the Secure Device Manager on our local PC. So we end up with a shortcut on the desktop for the application. Once we double click the Secure Device Manager, we are presented with the SDM Launcher and we are asked for the device IP address or host name. This can be any IP address that's reachable from your PC. It works a little better if it's the one that's closest to you, but if you're not 100% familiar with your network topology, any old IP address will do, providing there's not an access control list preventing Telnet, HTTP, or SSH on that particular interface. So we'll put in our IP address here. We'll click Launch. And first we're prompted for a username and password. Now this is a username and password that is local to the router, because again we've specified local configuration. If you use a TACAX or a AAA server of some type, this username and password could be one of those Radius or TACAX Plus users. So long as it has level 15 access by default, that user ID will work in this dialog box. In this case, we'll enter our super secret password of password for my user ID. And then it launches another screen that launches the Java applet. We're presented with another login box because by default, Internet Explorer does not pass the login credentials to Java. So we enter the same username and password here. And after just a few moments, the user interface launches and it will read in the current running configuration on the router. Now I've moved and resized this window just a little bit so that it all fits inside the recording window. One nice little bug about this particular application is if you grab this right hand border and drag this off to the right to make the window wider, these little buttons up here disappear. And in fact, I'm mousing over them now and you see that they disappear and reappear. Again, this is a very old application, and I'll be perfectly honest, it took me quite a while to even get it running on my workstation. But enough about all of my woes. Let's walk through the user interface. On the home page, it tells us about our router up here at the top. We've got our host name, iNetGW, which of course we knew was the correct host name because we configured it. it tells us what model of router it is. It's a 3725. It tells us how much memory and flash capacity it has on it the version of the iOS, and the version of the SDM that we're running on our workstation. It also tells us what features are available on our router. NAC, or Network Admission Control, IPS, or Intrusion Prevention Service, VPN, Firewall, and Basic IP Connectivity. In this case, the particular iOS I've loaded on this router does not support anything except IP and VPN. It doesn't do firewalling, IPS, or network admission control, but we're not doing a security course, so we don't really need most of those. In the bottom part of the home screen, we have the total number of supported LAN interfaces. In this case, we have two because that's all I've configured in this virtual router. We've configured two of them. DHCP is currently not configured. We'll fix that here in just a little bit. Tells us how many WAN connections we have available to us. I don't have any serial cards in this router. They're just all Ethernet. So we have no supported WAN and no total configured WAN interfaces. This router supports VPN, so it tells us how many VPN connections, GRE tunnels, active clients, so on and so forth. They're all zeros because, again, this isn't actually out on the Internet. Tells us how many routes we have in our route table, or static routes to be more specific. There's one static route, which is our default route. We are not running any routing protocols. There's a button on the home page that says Show Running Configuration. If you push it, you actually get the output of what you'd see if you typed Show Run at the console. You remember I said we had one static route? There's our one static route, IP route 00000000 with my inside firewall address. If we go to the Monitor tab, which I did actually push it even though it went away, we get a lot more information about the specifics of what's going on on the router. Here's the CPU and memory usage. There's all of the logging information about firewalls and QoS and DMVPN. If we wanted to drill down into the actual interfaces, here's our actual interfaces. It shows us our IP addresses and subnet masks. We can graph the packets in and out and the entire bandwidth usage over time. Again, nothing really going in and out because, again, it's a test router. If we had firewalls available to us, we could check the firewall status. Here's the VPN status. I won't go through all these tabs, but we can drill all the way down here on the bottom, and you can see everything that's available to you under the monitoring tab. 
The one that we missed, or the one that I haven't clicked yet, is right here in the middle. It's normally the configuration tab. Again, this Java applet is kind of buggy just because of the nature of the beast. This is where you can actually configure the router much as if it had a GUI, because this is pretty much the GUI for the router. If you wanted to configure static routes, you could go in here. You could turn on RIP or OSPF or EIGRP. You could go in and set up QoS policies. Turn on intrusion prevention if that feature was available in the iOS. And it's in here that we're actually going to go to additional tasks and configure DHCP. We'll do that in the next video.